Welcome back to another episode of MU Pop. I'm your host, Patrick Curran. And if you have not heard anything about Beyonce in the last two weeks, it's likely you are living under a rock. Uh, Beyonce just released a brand new album, Cowboy Carter, that dives into the history of country music. It has been loved by critics and audiences alike and was the biggest debut on the Billboard 200 of the year so far and Beyonce's biggest streaming week. So it shows that, you know, Queen Bee is still at the top of her game. My guest this week is Greg Cott, who graduated from Marquette in 1978. Greg went on to work at the Chicago Tribune as a music critic for 30 years, and he has attended over 2,000 concerts and has a wide knowledge of music. He even inter interviewed Beyonce back in her early days. Uh, so Greg is a host of the nationally syndicated program, Sound Opinions, where he discusses and analyzes music alongside his co-host, Jim. And it was such an honor to, you know, interview Greg and hear his thoughts on Beyonce's latest record. So to start off, I assume that you've listened to the new Beyonce album, have you? The Cowboy Carbury Carter? I, I, I hadn't heard of it until you mentioned it just now. It, oh, it's okay. really one of those under the radar records. Nobody nobody's talking about it from what I <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of my job. You know, we review records on sound opinions. Uh, we actually did a review of it today. Uh, it'll come out next week. But yes, I have listened to it quite a, quite a bit, actually. Yes, I think as everyone has this week. Um, so what was like your reaction when you first heard that Beyonce was doing a country album? Uh, well, I, th that was kind of a, a red herring, you know, because I quickly, once you start listening to the record, you go, there, there's been so much wasted effort put into, is it a country album or not? Like at, at the end of the day, who who really cares? It, but but I guess it's a hot button issue for some people, mm -hmm. the purists in country music, who were offended that Beyonce dared to perform at the Country Music Awards in 2016, and you know she never really forgot that. She sort of put that away in her her to do list for later. Like I'm going to address this at some point, you know, in, in musical form because she'd already done a sort of a country song called daddy lessons and then she did it with uh the dixie the then dixie yeah. chicks yeah at the cmas so you know the country thing has sort of been blown out of proportion that you know you listen to the record and there's obviously you know uh country music checkpoints you know and the list of cameos uh country performers from the past and currently a lot of black country performers uh, but I think the larger issue is that just it's a sprawling Beyonce album that happens to have some country music on it, but it has all other kinds of genres as well. Yeah, no, it's very, very innovative. You know, I was listening to it and the first couple songs, I was like, okay, this is kind of what I guess I expected. And then the song Spaghetti came, which was with the big, you know, kind of rap verse. And I was like, wow. And then, right. you know, Yaya ya at the end, that's, you know, taking inspiration from so many different types of music it's really um just amazing to see the influence in the work that she puts in to make sure that she's you know she's referring to different you know the Beatles cover and the Dolly cover and the, all the different features I thought it was a a very like well as everything Beyonce does a well thought out project um you can clearly tell that she wanted uh to make a statement and that she did um so what did you think about the first two singles, the 16 Carriages and Texas Hold'em, when they were released? Um, you know, Texas Hold'em, I, I, I was excited about it from a standpoint of Rhiannon Giddens uh, getting a, 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 a lot, you know, showcased in that. I think she's an amazing artist and has been for quite a long time. A scholar, in addition to being a, a you know, wonderful musician, uh, so it's great to see her involved with with Beyonce. And I thought, you know, it's a nice it's it's sort of a, a the track itself. I'm not sure. Lyrically, I think it's kind of slight, kind of silly, mm -hmm. but I think uh, the music's great. Um, and it was a nice single. Uh, and, it, and it was very probably the most country, as it turns out, maybe the most country sounding song on the record. Right. It, yeah. Um, it has that going for it. Um, you know, 16 carriages, from what I can tell, it's kind of about her uh, touring life, you know, and it's uh, 
it's a it's a good track i mean it's but it's you know again it sort of veers off you know it's kind of more of a i, I think the influences there are may, may, maybe more folkish americana types of music as opposed to a pure country record um and the subject matter is definitely more uh you know what i think what she may be referring to there is her early days as a performer kind of the destiny's child era you know where it, it was a grind you know you're you're trying you're struggling as an artist to get out there and people forget that beyonce had a life where when uh, nobody knew who she was really you know yeah. there was a time when you know she was uh struggling to be recognized just like any other new artist and uh you know, I remember talking to her in those days, I interviewed the group and even then it was pretty apparent that she was kind of the alpha in the group, you know, um, but at the same time, she understood the work ethic. She was incredibly driven, just a very, you know, I'm going to put in the work. I'm not afraid of working really hard to get what I want to get to. So I think that's sort of a, like a little window into that time in her life. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I found it uh, lyrically. I thought that the song um, went into something that I don't know if we've really heard from Beyonce before, like a personal story. So I appreciated that. Um, what, like, I know we kind of touched on this earlier and the whole debate about if this should be played on country radio and if not, like, what do you think the conversation should be regarding, you know, Beyonce as this huge cultural figure, you know, she's stepping into a lane, like people are calling it a genre shift, but she's saying, you know, this is a Beyonce album. It's not a country album. What do you make of that statement? Oh, I mean, I, she's absolutely right. I mean, she's making the last few albums, especially I've been very, I've been sprawling musically. She's been, you know, she's focused on certain genres like the previous album. I guess this is the second of a trilogy yes first one was just focusing a little bit more on the dance club house music scene and she brought in some artists that represent that but then there was also music beyond that and we're getting the same kind of treatment here but you know you go back to her uh, records uh, uh, prior to that you know the lemonade record i thought was the first one where you really got the sense of a broad range of musical interests that she has and i think she was kind of determined to touch on a lot of them uh in, in that record and it was really kind of an eye opener for a lot of people you know that she's pretty well versed in a lot of a lot of music besides what people think she you know does you know which is i guess soul pop r&b uh she's also interested in many other types of music and is conversant with that um you know i think the only criticism you might have and i think that was initially my thought about cowboy carter was that um it's almost too much for its own good. There's, you know, 27 songs and yeah. 80, 80 minutes. And man, that's just a lot to absorb, you know. Um, it's it's a lot. And I felt like it could have been stronger if it had been a little more focused. You know, like a really strong album, really kind of more narrowing it down into some of the country stuff that she had going on. But um, that's not who she is. I mean, she wants to show it's almost like she's trying to please a lot of different constituencies at the same time. But I think ultimately the person she wants to please is herself, you know? And I think this album, the more I listened to it, the more I realized, you know, it's kind of one of those albums that sort of shifts around. There's a reason it's so dense is that almost every time you listen to it, you, you find like new favorites, you yeah. know, like at first you're kind of going, Oh, these are kind of throwaways. And then you listen to it a few more times and you go, Oh, I really like that track that I didn't think I liked that much or, I'm starting to get checked out here in the second half of the record. Well, I realized the second half of the record has a bunch of stuff on it that I really like now. And maybe even more so than some of the stuff I was initially drawn to. So I think it's kind of like that it's sort of a delightful record to sort of jump into at any point and just find something that is appealing. You know, she tried to make it a record that is cohesive and, you know, the radio, uh, the radio interludes with, you know, uh, Willie Nelson and uh, Linda Martell are designed to be, okay, this is like a radio station, mm -hmm. but it's a radio station that's playing everything, you know, there's like no, there's no, no holds barred here. It's not a genre specific thing. And I think the bigger statement that I take away from the Beyonce records of recent years is that, 
black music used to be confined to certain genres. Like they're not, black artists really aren't allowed in country music and they're not really allowed in rock music. Well, she's basically making those statements that, well, basically black music is all of those, all of those music, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people didn't know that country music basically started with black people, you know. I mean, they at least had a 50% stake in the early days of country music. The banjo was a, you know, a, a black instrument. Yeah. You know, and ditto for rock. I mean, black people invented rock and roll. You know, the greatest songwriter in rock and roll uh, for for at least a decade until the next generation came along was Chuck Berry. Uh, writing original songs, playing guitar. I mean, basically set the template. Sister Rosetta Tharp, gospel performer. She was rock and roll in the 40s before they even named the damn thing, you know. So Beyonce is basically saying, you know, uh, Kanye was like, I want a seat at the table, right? And he, you know, because he felt like we were being excluded. Well, Beyonce is saying, we're the table. <laughs> you know, all those other people sitting around the table are are there because of the table. You know, we set the table for all these other genres, rock and roll, country, house music, hip hop, you know, you name it. Black music is the core of that. So, um, that's what she's i think that's really what she's getting at that's why these albums are so big yeah um, and it may be too much for some people to absorb it, it may be overwhelming but she doesn't care she wants to say i can do this and i can do that and who are you to tell me what i can't do it's very very true and um do you think that this will give beyonce her over deserved album of the year win at the grammys well you know she one of these days she's going to get one of those <laughs> yeah you know i don't really get it you know i don't get hung up on grammys because i think they're a bunch of bs anyway you know um, agreed <laughs> they're, they're, they, they, they've they've missed the mark so many times on so many artists it's just like ridiculous um so beyonce i hope isn't losing sleep over the fact that she hasn't gotten an album of the year, although she's won a bunch of other Grammy awards. Most, yeah, it's all time. Um, and it is kind of ridiculous that if you're going to like, here's an artist who kind of checks all the boxes. She's, you know, she's not only selling a lot of records and is a superstar on that level, but she's also gotten a fair amount of critical acclaim. Like people genuinely mm -hmm. think she's an important artist. And I would say that really start, I, I would say, especially with Lemonade, it was really hard to make an argument that she was just a kind of a a pop queen, uh, just strictly in it for, you know, the bucks and, 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 a, and a few quick singles and celebrityhood. You know, she is that, but she's an artist, you know, uh, and she always was one. But if if it didn't wasn't apparent with uh, Lemonade, then you're you're absolutely clueless. And I, I really think Lemonade is. This, you know, and the recent records are very good, but I think Lemonade was was the album of the year. Uh, and it wasn't just because of the Grammys. I think that that should have been on top 10 list at the end of the year. Everybody's top, top 10 list because it's that good of a record. Yeah. So, I went, you know, I went, I went back and read your review of it in the trip um, and it was a very good review. <laughs> Um, well, and, and, you know, that review, I got to say, you know, like everything with the trip was written on a deadline and I wish I had more time to spend with that record but that was sort of like my um first take on on the record after listening to it a billion times in the course of like a day you know yeah <laughs> and uh you know i i go back to it occasionally to say hey i hope i wasn't too hasty in some of these judgments and every time i listen to it i'm only more encouraged that this was a a, a tremendous achievement and deserves all the accolades Yes, very much so. And uh, quickly, what was the standout on Cowboy Carter for you? What was it? Is there a song that you're going back to? Yeah, I mean, there's a few that I, you know, um, I, I think the ver the first track is is incredible at setting the stage for this record. American Requiem 2 um, is an amazing track. It has that, starts off with that choir and then it starts to get a little more psychedelic with that sitar and her voice starts to intensify. And, you know, when she's just starts to really fly about two thirds of the way through there vocally, 
uh, and then you end up on that, you know, she lands on that, if, if, you know, uh, I said, do you hear me? Um, it's a pretty powerful track. And then in addition to that, it sort of works both ways. It's not just a song about black music, but it's about black culture, black uh, history. Uh, goodbye to what has been a pretty house that we never settled in. You know, the, the, it's a pretty profound track musically and, uh, you know, just just as a cultural and historical statement. So that's, I think that's a great track. Bodyguard is just a great pop song. Uh, hard to get that one out of your head. I think it's, yeah. it's a great breezy pop song. It's got that chill vibe. It's kind of a little break in the action in terms of the what's come before it. And it's really cool. I think it's a great track. I love Daughter. With At first I thought the opera was kind of, the, the, the Italian opera bit was outrageously, like almost ridiculous. And then I realized, no, what she's doing here is paying tribute to spaghetti westerns, you know, which are Italian takes on uh, on, on Western movies, you know, and it's uh, it it then it it made sense to me. It it's really kind of her coming at at it from a different angle. The whole country thing, um, I, I think is brilliant. And then Amen at the end uh, really ties in with American Requiem too as the beginning of the album. It sort of bookends the record. Uh, and that's an amazing track with that gospel choir coming in. You know, you have that disruptive background over those big piano chords, really kind of strange and staticky and uh, electronic and eerie and weird. And then you've got that gospel choir roaring in. And then she talks about, you know, um, the statues they made were beautiful, but they were lies of stone, talking about the way you know, the South celebrated all these uh, slave owners, you know, yeah. uh, and now those statues are 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 rightfully being taken down. Um, meanwhile, we built this country kind of thing, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty powerful stuff. Uh, you know, she's so she's hitting it at all levels, musically and getting in some really tough, uh, you know, political stuff that for a lot of superstars, is anathema because hey i might turn off some of my audience somebody you know some people in my audience might not like me anymore you know because i'm saying political things you know she's not afraid to go there yes yes and i know you've spoken about beyonce a lot with the episode that you recorded so just one final question of is there any music coming out that you're looking forward to or anything that you have you know your eyes on or something you're listening to a lot these days well you know the um there was uh, there's a bunch of records that I've actually I've actually been listening to in in recent weeks. Um, just look here. I I want to I'm going to look at my Spotify list here for a second. I hope I'm not screwing up your TV. <laughs> you're, you're, no, you're fine. Uh, Don't worry at all. Um, we just reviewed. Uh, just just started really diving into this. Um, hooray for the hooray for the riffraff record. I love that. It's a. It, I think it's an amazing record. She's an. Uh, they is an incredible artist. Um, the other records that I've been listening to, uh, the new. Uh, there's an artist named Jay Lynn, a house artist out of Chicago. Okay. Uh, she's doing stuff that sort of trend classic crosses over into classical music and jazz. Wow. Uh, started out in the house footwork scene. Amazing stuff. Uh, Shabaka, the uh, Shabaka Hutchins, the uh, jazz uh, saxophonist in uh, in the UK, really smart man. We interviewed him before. He's got a new record out that sort of like has a bunch of guest stars on it. Uh, that I, I I think is kind of almost like it's not like a pop crossover move, but it's a very it's a fascinating record. Um, so those have been really high on my list lately. Those are the records I've been listening to the most. Okay, I haven't listened to any of them, so I'm going to check them out and. Uh... Hopefully yeah, them. you should. There, there's just a, an amazing amount of good music coming out. Yeah, this year, and I think you know anybody who says, "Oh, they made it better," if music was better ten years ago or forty years ago. I said, you know, come on. I mean, I'm finding good stuff every week to listen to. It's not a, not. There's no shortage of great music being made right now. We're living in a great time for new music, and uh, just just keep your ears open because it's out there. Thank you, Greg, for discussing Beyonce's latest album with me. Make sure to check out Sound Opinions and hear the episode that they have coming out about Cowboy Carter. That is all for this week. 
Make sure to follow Marquette Television on social media. See you later, Marquette.